What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? Today we're going to take a deep dive all the way back into 1982 where I'm going to show you this amazing monogram Lamborghini LP500S. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might want to see next. Quit all that jive talking, Trevor. Let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. 1982 was an excellent year for everything. Movies, music, and model kits. We got such great movies as E.T., The Dark Crystal, Conan the Barbarian, Blade Runner, and Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. We also got this amazing Lamborghini LP500S from Monogram. Now this is a later edition of this kit, however you can see just how cool this thing is. On this side of the kit we can read all about the Lamborghini LP500S with its 5 liter 12 cylinder engine. And then as we look along here we get an understanding of skill level 1, 2, and 3. And I did my research and I marked this kit as a 1982. And on this side of the box we can see the amazing rear 3 quarter shot, the engine compartment, and the front three quarter shot. And this model kit, this edition, came out in 1991. And in case you're wondering, this was featured in the Revell CD Power Modeler. You built the model and then you actually raced it in a video game style street race. Really cool stuff for back in the day. I happened to find this one for four dollars, believe it or not, at a Salvation Army. So here we've got our instruction sheet, we've got the wonderful body for our Lambo, and then we've got our glass sitting in here, and all these nice white components, the interior, and then we've got this nice frame and the big V12 sitting in there, a decal sheet, um, and again more great parts. There's tires in here, somebody cut the chrome out of there, and uh, many more other great things. Okay, now it's my turn to uh, show you the car instructions here. So here we've got this great V12 for this engine. We've got cam covers, dual ones. So this is dual overhead cam. Then we got the cylinder head. We got a two-piece engine block with transmission, the transmission cover, the oil pan cover, the starter motor, and then we've got this wonderful paint callout sheet up above here, just before we begin building everything. And here we have the second half of the engine with dual headers for each side. So you get four headers complete in this kit. And then we've got our engine mount here in the front cover, and there's all the bits. Now I noticed Trevor's missing his chrome pieces, so we got stuff like the alternator that's chrome, but there isn't too much chrome in this kit, so maybe we can use some from the parts box. Image three shows our wheel wells and the front suspension members. Panel four shows those components mounting up onto the floor pan. Panel 5, we get our two-piece radiator gluing together, and then that will drop in back here, because this is a rear engine car, I do believe. Then we've got our bulkhead, fuel filter, dual coils, and another radiator over here, so twin radiators, one on each side. The panel 6 shows our crossover pipes going in place. And then in panel 7, we drop in the big Ferrari motor. Panels 8 and 9 show our muffler being glued together. So there's the lower portion and here's the upper portion. And then there's a body panel which glues in place. Now panel 10 shows the dual tailpipes going in place. These are chrome, so again Trevor's missing it in his kit. Then we've got the half shaft and the hub carrier going in here. That of course is for our rear suspension. And we can put our license plate right between those tailpipes. Here we've got our rear springs going on and as you can see you get four of them. And then over here, what do we got? We got our Weber carbs going up onto the top of the engine and our air filter as well. Now in panel 14, we can see our bucket seats going in place as well as this rear window and our handbrake and our shift lever. Now that's chrome again, but that wouldn't be too hard to replace. And then here we have our pedals dropping in in panel 15. The panel 16 shows our four piece dashboard going together. You get the top padded bit, you get the instrument cluster and the dashboard and the radio. And here you get the steering column and the steering wheel. Now before I continue, you got to see how, just how many 
cool songs are out in 1982. We had Ebony and Ivory by Stevie Wonder, I Ran by the Flock, a Flock of Seagulls, Eye of the Tiger by Glass Tiger, Always on My Mind by Willie Nelson, Dirty Laundry by Bob Henley, Goody Two Shoes by Adam Ant, and then you got What by Captain Sensible, Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran, Look of Love by ABC, Back on the Chain Gang by The Pretenders, The Vacation by Go-Go's, and The Safety Dance, if you're up in Canada, by Minute Work. And if you're out in Germany, that's the year that Nina Hagen released the Nunsex Monk Rock album, her very first album on her solo career. Now panel 17 shows the two-piece brake booster going together. Panel 18 shows our heater blower, the cross member, and our master cylinder being dropped into the front of the car. And there's this nice tire molded in place as well. Panel 19 shows our bumper with the road lamps and the lenses, and that goes onto the front of the car. Now in panel 20, we've got our turn signal cover going on top of these chrome plated turn signals. So again, Trevor's got to improvise somehow on that one. And then we've got our radiator scoops going on with the two piece there. And then that nice rear wing dropping in place. It's even got supports. Now here in panel 22, we show another chrome item, the rear view mirror going in place. Then we've got our side glasses and we've got our front suspension up here that goes in there. And here we've got our engine cover, which hooks into place there. Panel 23 shows our completed interior dropping in place and there's little tabs on here for the hinged back so make sure you don't accidentally glue those in place. If you ever wanted to go into space you would need these NASA scoops sitting right here in your Lamborghini. And in panel 25 we put the uh, frame into the body but don't forget to put these springs in place as well. Panel 26 shows our hub carrier being put in place. And then we've got our windshield and windshield wiper in panel 27. In panel 28, we see this body panel being glued in place with our tail lights so that goes into the back. And then we've got our chrome outer wheel, which thankfully Trevor does have, the inner wheel and the wheel backing plate, and all that pushes into the tire. Panel 31 shows our wheels being glued in place, which is really cool. Followed by panel 32 that shows the side mirrors and again chrome plated mirrors which Trevor's got to figure that one out. And then a cross member up here. And last but not least we get to put in the deck lid and that would complete our Lamborghini. Here at the bottom of our instruction sheet we see the decal placement for the model kit. There's our second decal going on and our Countach license plate which goes back here. Okay Trevor now show us the plastic parts. Well, thank you so much, Danny, for going through the instructions and pointing out all the chrome pieces I'm missing. At least it's not too bad. At least it's not like a 55 Chevy or something, because that would be like three quarters of the car gone. But anyway, here is our Lamborghini. I'll just move this back a little bit. You can see all the nice vents in here. The detail is excellent. Look at that spare tire underneath there. That's a real beautiful piece. It's just kind of too bad that this wasn't molded separate, that we could just put it in the pan. That's going to be an interesting challenge to paint. However, again, this model looks accurate. Looks like they got everything on there that you need. And then all that would be in the uh, parts. Now here we do have some tall uh, parting mo uh, mold marks, which would have to be sanded off or removed with that number 16 hobby blade. But overall, I say this body is quite amazing. Perfect monogram kit. On this parts tree, we can see our great V12 engine. Look at how long that thing is. There's that uh, front wheel wells and all that. The transmission pan, the top of the dashboard, the front bumper. Really great stuff in here. Take a look at the detail on that. It's all nice and crisp. Look at all the uh, little ribs and everything on there. Perfect. Perfect to Ferrari mode. There we go with the uh, braces and everything. Now again, there's these mold marks underneath, which will have to be flattened down, especially like on the transmission cover or the engine oil pan. You want that to sit flat. You don't want any of those little bumps to uh, lift that up on you. So again, there we are. A really excellent, excellent work from Monogram. On this parts tree, we have that wonderful chassis pan and the rear pan. There's our headers and our dual overhead cams, as well as the fans and the wheelbacks, I do believe. Yeah, they'd have to be. Look at all of the framework in here. Real space age, real cutting edge. Again, those mold marks are really high on there. I, I don't know why Monogram had them so big. But at any rate, look at the uh, dual overhead cams on there. Excellent stuff. It's a really great model. I just wish that chrome wasn't missing. 
Here on this parts tray, we have the wonderful bucket seats. Look at the uh, detail on there. If you ever pick up one of these from a later monogram release or whatever, you're going to have fun building it. Look at the gauges on there. Six of them. Excellent. Actually, I think Danny's wrong. I don't... Yeah, there is a radio on there. Okay, never mind. So there we go. Look at the back there. Lamborghini Countach. <laughs> again, really awesome stuff, but those, again, really, really high mold marks on there. And here on this parts tree, we see the wonderful steering wheel. There's the wheels with the pegs on there, so be careful not to knock them off, because that is your only axle. There's the Weber carbs sitting on there. Looks like 12 of them, one per cylinder. And there's all the nice springs and McPherson struts and the transmission members and everything. There's our pedals, but again, got the heavy mold marks across the back. Always a problem. But overall, I mean, once you get this all cleaned up, this will make a very beautiful model. And here we have our interior with that rear panel hatch. Let's just take a look at the hatch here. Look at the nice detail on that. That is excellent. Again, some old marks at the bottom, but it shouldn't be too hard to clean up and take care of. And then there's our interior. It's even got the proper shift pattern on there. That you, of course, have to paint uh, chrome, I do believe. And then uh, mold marks again, but hopefully those get hidden by a lot of the uh, interior components, like the dashboard and whatnot. Door panels are quite nice, even looks like it's got a speaker right there. So again, quite nice, but over here, of course, no mold marks. Why couldn't they have molded this the other way around? Well, whatever. But at any rate, it should look good once you get it all cleaned up. Here we have all our clear components, and you got that windshield right down there, and our side glass in the rear window and the front headlight covers, as well as the rear taillights. Now, the rear taillights you're going to have to paint, and uh, even those front turn signal covers. So you'd need a transparent red and a yellow just to get that all great. Something like a tester's turn signal yellow and stop light red. Now luckily for me the only chrome left on this Salvation Army $4 kit was the actual chrome for the wheels. So I guess maybe that's why it was $4. I mean that chrome parts tree is still important even though there's not much there. But these things do look beautiful. I like the uh, five holes in here. And the tires are Pirelli's which is really amazing. Look at the nice tread on there. So thankfully this was all left as uh, in the box, because otherwise I don't know what I'd do if uh, I had the Pirelli tires but no wheels, or the wheels but no Pirelli tires. Kind of important there. So here we have the uh, little decal sheet, and there really is only two decals on here. These are, of course are these emblems which go on the side of the car, and then we've got an Illinois Countach license plate. I hope you found this video most enlightening as we looked back at 1982 and I hope that I've helped you understand what's inside this great model kit in case you want to get one in the future. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website and don't forget to subscribe right down here. Now as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other. Now, when I woke up this morning, I was feeling fine, but this cat starts banging, man. What a swine. So I called reception, but to no avail. That's why I'm telling you this sorry tale.